So, welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue uh, the de definition of Lilput and Lie algebras and then see some of its pro basic properties. Okay. So, let us uh, first recall uh, how we define this uh, Lilput and Lie algebras. So, first uh, we define what is called this lower central series. So, you start with a Lie algebra. over C. So, then uh, we have this uh, following uh, sequence of ideals inside C called lower central series. So, this is defined inductively. So, first you take G naught to be G and then G 1 to be the bracket G G the derived algebra and then G 2 to be the bracket of G with G 1. Okay. So, this is very different from uh, the derived series. So, and so on suppose let us say we have defined uh, g power n and then uh, then g power n plus 1 is defined to be the bracket g with uh, g power n. So, then the sequence so this g i where i greater than or equal to 0 this is called lower central series. Okay. So, because if you think about it, uh, if you take g n and then go modulo uh, that g n. So, if you take g and then go modulo g n, then what is the definition of g n plus 1? So, g n plus 1 is actually equal to uh, g g n. Okay. So, in particularly, uh, if you look at yeah so this uh, g n plus 1 so the g n plus 1 will be actually contained in g n okay so i guess we should go modulo g n plus 1 so then it is clear that if you take this g n modulo this g n plus 1 so, this actually lies inside the center of G modulo G n plus 1. So, just from the definition. Okay. So, because uh, this G, so if we take any element from uh, uh, this uh, left hand side G n modulo G n plus 1, then it is easy to see if you compute x with any y plus g n. Okay. So, so, then what we get this is x y plus g n plus 1. Okay. So, we are computing this x plus g n plus 1, y plus g n plus that commutator. So, that will be bracket x y plus g n plus 1 then you can see that uh, since uh, this bracket x y is an element of g n plus 1. So, since x y is in g n plus 1. So, this implies the bracket x plus g n plus 1 y plus g n plus 1. So, that is 0 inside g modulo g n plus 1. Okay. And this is true for any y and g. So, that means, uh, this g if you take this center of g modulo g n plus 1 that should contain this g n modulo g n plus 1. Okay. So, because of this we call uh, this as a central series. Okay. Every time when you go modulo uh, the previous thing so, that the new thing will be actually like g n modulo g n plus 1 will be contained in the z modulo g modulo g n plus 1. So, using this also one can actually give a characterization for Nilpot and Lie algebras. Maybe I will state that in the uh, x uh, problem sheet. Okay. Let us move on. So, here is 
you are very uh, here is an important example ok. So, if we take uh, the strictly upper triangular matrices, so that must be nilpotent ok. This is a uh, very 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 important example you start with uh, what is called this strictly upper triangular matrices the set of all n by n strictly upper triangular matrices over C. So, we have seen that this is a subalgebra of uh, set of all n by n matrices ok or the general linear Lie algebra. So, we claim that this is indeed nilpotent. Let us consider this example the set of all n by n uh, strictly upper triangular matrices over C. This we saw that this is a subalgebra of uh, G L and C the general linear Lie algebra. So, if we compute uh, the derived algebra of this it is easy to see that it is actually spanned by all this E i j such that j minus i greater than equal to 2. So, if we do uh, more computation I will leave it to you to check. So, this is something uh, I will not verify I will just leave it as exercise. <coughs> so, if you compute G 2, so this will be spanned by the vectors uh, the elementary matrices E i j such that the level of that uh, elementary matrix is at least 3 ok. So, now you can see the pattern. So, and so on. So, if you take any g power r, so that will be spanned by the elementary matrices E i j such that j minus i is greater than or equal to r plus 1. So, that implies, so when uh, r is at least uh, n plus 1, so then it is clear that uh, this g power r will be 0. So, that implies, so this Lie algebra is actually nilpotent Lie algebra. So, this is a, a very very important uh, this is a very important uh, Lie algebra. So, we will see later that any subalgebra of uh, nilpotent Lie algebra must be nilpotent. So, that is some easy fact. So, indeed uh, we will prove uh, the Engels theorem as an one of as one of the application of Engels theorem we will get uh, any nilpotent Lie algebra can be realized as subalgebra of this strictly upper triangular matrices ok. So, that is the very important structure theorem about uh, nilpotent Lie algebra. So, that is our aim uh, today. So, let us actually move on. So, if we take uh, uh, this triangular matrices so, which we have actually denoted by T and C. So, this is set of all upper triangular matrices ok. This is actually not nilpotent. So, this is soluble, but not nilpotent. So, it is not hard to see if you compute the derived algebra of this T and C. So, that will be strictly upper triangular matrices. But if you go to the <coughs> lower central series and then compute G 2 for example, so that will be T n C comma n n C. So, that will be again n n C. So, you will not go down. <coughs> so, this actually kind of tells you that. So, this is something I will leave it to you to check. <coughs> so, this immediately implies if you compute any G k. So, that has to be uh, this is the derived algebra of G which is N N C. So, that implies this T N C will never be nilpotent ok. So, here is another simple example that we have already seen. 
so which is again soluble but non nilpotent okay so if you take uh, for example this g2 non abelian so which is spanned by two elements x and y such that x y being equal to x so if you compute <coughs> the derivative algebra of this so this will be one dimensional but if you compute g2 it is not hard to see this is again one dimensional cx so this implies actually gk is again one dimensional so in particularly lower central series will never go down very strictly so that means g is not uh, nilpotent but we have already verified uh, g is actually solvable okay so g is solvable but not nilpotent so that means the class of soluble lie algebras is strictly very big class okay then class of nilpotent lie algebras and we will see later that uh, there is a very close relationship between uh, the class of soluble lie algebras and the class of nilpotent lie algebras okay so that is something uh, we will actually prove so so here is some important properties of this nilpotent lie algebras so you start with the lie algebra okay so here is the proportion the first statement if g is nilpotent so then its uh, subalgebras and uh, homomorphic images all of them are nilpotent all subalgebras and homomorphic images okay this is again easy to prove so what is the proof so just look at k which is a subalgebra of g so then it is not that difficult to prove if you compute k power i which will be subset of g power i so that means whenever g power i is zero that will imply k power i zero so that proves any subalgebra of an nilpotent lie algebra is nilpotent so for the quotient if you call pi is a quotient map from g to g dash which is a surjective map let's say like a homomorphism then one can easily check if you compute pi of gi so that will be equal to g dash of i so that will imply if g power i is 0 then pi of gi will be g dash power i that will be 0 so that again says the quotient is also or the homomorphic image is also nilpotent so <coughs> recall our example this uh, if when we took uh, this uh, lie algebra <coughs> uh, g2 non abelian so when we computed uh, this uh, derived algebra so that being one dimensional so that is an abelian lie algebra so all abelians are easy to see they are all uh, nilpotent lie algebras so this is actually nilpotent so if you go modulo this uh, g1 so then g modulo g1 again being one dimensional so this is just a one dimensional so that will imply this is also nilpotent or it is actually indeed abelian so this is in particularly nilpotent but what happens g we just saw that it is not nilpotent so even though there is an ideal which is the derived algebra okay that is being nilpotent and when you go modulo that again we get nilpotent the quotient is also nilpotent does not imply that g nilpotent okay. So this is actually nilpotent Lie algebras or somewhat restricted classes of Lie algebras okay. So in this sense the solvable Lie algebras are much more uh, like uh, important Lie algebras because uh, so they are actually <coughs> satisfies this condition whenever you have ideal inside G if I is soluble and G modulo I is soluble so that would imply G is soluble so 
we will see later if this property is actually somewhat very important property to check solubility, but this property is no longer true for nilpotent Lie algebras. Okay. So, that is actually kind of uh, tells you that uh, working with nilpotent Lie algebras will be harder than working with soluble Lie algebras. So, uh, but is there any weaker version? Of course, there is a weaker version. What we can do? We can actually go modulo the center. So, center is always abelian. Okay. So, if you go modulo the center and then if you get nilpotent, so then we can assure that G is nilpotent. That is again not very hard to prove. Suppose G modulo center of G is nilpotent, then G modulo center of G some power k will be 0. So, that would imply that G power k will be subset of center of G. So, now if you compute G power k plus 1, which is the bracket G with G power k. So, that will be just a subset of the bracket G with center of G but the bracket g with center of g is 0. So, that would imply that g power k plus 1 is 0. So, that means g is indeed nilpotent. Okay. So, this is actually one of the important uh, checking. Okay. So, whenever you have uh, this Lie algebra, if you want to check it is nilpotent, just go modulo the center and then see whether it is nilpotent it is kind of reduces the dimension bit. So, now uh, we can see that being nilpotent is actually somewhat very strong condition. Okay. So, what I mean by that? So, this lower central series that is actually converges to 0. Okay. So, that is what nilpotent means. So, in particularly, so if there is a k that is chosen minimally such a way that g power k is 0, so then what will happen? So, choose k minimal such that g power k is 0. So, then it is immediate that g power k minus 1 will be non 0. But what is the definition of g power k? So, g power k is nothing but the bracket g, g power k minus 1. So, that implies this g power k minus 1. So, this is inside the center of g. Okay. So, this implies g power k minus 1 is part of the center of g. Since g power k minus 1 is non-zero, so that means the center is being non-zero. Okay. So, if g is nilpotent, so then we proved that the center of g is non-zero. Okay. So, for some reason if you know that center is 0, then you can immediately conclude that the g cannot be nilpotent. For example, semi simple Lie algebras. So, we have seen that uh, center is being 0. So, that means uh, semi simple Lie algebras will be never nilpotent unless they are 0. Okay. So, this actually kind of recalls some basic properties. So, here is some observation. So, we will actually unravel the definition of nilpotent and then see what it means in, said in terms of this adjoint uh, operators. Okay. <coughs> so, let us say G is being nilpotent and then G power k plus 1 is 0. Okay. So, I can assume k is being uh, greater than or equal to 0. Okay. You start with g being non-zero space. So, if g is 0, then there is nothing to actually worry about. So, then I can choose k such that g power k plus 1 is 0. Okay. So, now if you actually just write down the definition of this g power k plus 1, what is this? So, this is by definition bracket g with g power k. So, then if you unravel again, so this is just the bracket g with g and so on. So, you will be taking successive bracket up to some k number of 10 and then acting on g. 
So, this is k number of times okay. and this is being 0 that tells you that if you take the successive brackets k number of times okay. So, then you will be getting 0. So, the leeward's of this form okay coming from this space <coughs> they are called right norm leeward's. So, let us look at what we get in the end. So, if you just uh, take uh, uh, this to be 0 this part to be 0. So, then this means so for any x 1 etcetera x k in g and y in g we get the bracket x 1, the bracket x 2 and so on, the bracket x k comma y is being 0. Okay. So, the leeward's of this form are called right norm leeward's. Okay. So, you can see that you can similarly define what is called left to norm leeward's. So, this is a very specific way of uh, uh, taking successive leap, leap products. Okay. So, in Lie algebra because uh, the leap product being non-associative and non-commutative Lie algebra uh, sorry Lie pr uh, product. So, you have to be very careful in uh, taking the product. So, the order in which you take the product matters. So, here we are talking about very particular order of uh, taking the Lie product. Okay, this will be called right top lever. So, if you write this in terms of this add x maps, then this is equivalent to add x 1 composition, add x 2 composition etcetera, add x k applied on y is 0. So, and this is true for all y. So, this says the map add x 1 composition etcetera composition add x k this itself is 0 and this is true for all x i's. Okay. So, x 1 etcetera x k for all x 1 etcetera x k it is true. So, in particularly if you take all the x i's to be equal okay, suppose x 1 equal to x 2 equal to etcetera x k then we get add x power x k is being 0. Okay. So, that means, what we have indeed proved for any x in g add x is nilpotent as an operator on g. Okay. So, that means, all elements of g are add nilpotent. Okay. So, that is the conclusion. So, indeed we will prove later, so which is called Ingle's theorem. Okay. So, this actually characterizes the nilpotent Lie algebras. So, let me state the theorem. So, we will actually later prove it. So, this was uh, proved by Wilhelm Engel. So, what it says G is nilpotent of course, this is a finite dimensional space okay. if and only if all elements of G are odd nilpotent. So, that means, add x is nilpotent for all x in G. So, this is actually one of the condition. So, even though uh, this thing actually looks like add nilpotent uh, being uh, very weaker the weaker than uh, this condition. Okay, so this is easy to see. So G is nilpotent if and only if if you compose there exists k such that add x one composition etc. Add x k is zero for all x one etc. X k in G. So that is just being definition. So that is one of the characterization. But uh, from this we are getting this weaker version add x k be add x being nilpotent. We are saying that if all elements are add nilpotent, so that would characterize the nilpotency of the Lie algebra. Okay. It is a very, very powerful statement. 
So, we indeed uh, want to prove this ok. So, for that actually uh, we would like to prepare ourselves a bit ok. So, so here are some uh, results that we have already seen ok. Let me just recall. So, suppose G is linear Lie subalgebra. So, let us say G is contained in G L of V where V is finite dimensional vector space. So, then we can talk about nilpotent elements inside G ok. If X is nilpotent, so then we proved that add X is also nilpotent. Okay. So, this is something uh, we already proved. So, in a way if you are interested in proving uh, Engels theorem, so in you can see that Engels theorem is actually equivalent to the following statement. Okay. So, let me call it uh, E 1. So, what is the statement? Suppose G is linear Lie subalgebra and all elements of G are nilpotent. So, then we say G is nilpotent Lie algebra. Okay. So, this is actually I would like to say uh, E 1 is <coughs> equivalent to uh, this theorem Engels theorem E 2. Okay. For example, why E 1 implies E 2? Okay, let me call this E 2 as okay, G is nilpotent. So, let me write only one way. So, let G B L E algebra. So, not necessarily linear Lie algebra and all elements of G are add nilpotent. So, then we have G is nilpotent Lie algebra. Okay, so, why this is uh, why E 1 implies E 2 E 1 implies E 2 because so what we can do. So, given G you always have this what is called this adjoint map. Okay. So, look at this add map from G to G L of G. So, then you know that add G will be isomorphic to G modulo the center G. Okay. So, now where is odd g? Add g is being subalgebra of glg. You can see that the hypothesis actually says if all elements of g are add nilpotent that means all elements of this add g they are nilpotent. Okay. So, that means uh, using this E 1 we can conclude that okay, using E 1 we can conclude that add g is nilpotent. So, once we know that add g is nilpotent because it is isomorphic to g modulo center g. So, that implies g modulo center g is nilpotent. So, that means g is nilpotent from our earlier remark. Okay. So, this will imply g modulo center g is nilpotent. So, that would imply G is nilpotent. Okay. So, basically we proved that the statement E 1 actually implies E 2. So, now uh, <coughs> if you think about how E 2 implies E 1. Okay. So, what we can do one can think G Okay, as abstract Lie algebra. 
So, since uh, all the elements of G are nilpotent, so then we using this remark we can see that uh, all elements of G are ad nilpotent. Okay. So, then by E2 we get uh, G is nilpotent Lie algebra. Okay. So, again this remark is used in order to prove E2 implies E1. So, E2 implies E1 can be proved using just uh, this remark let me call it 1. Okay. using remark 1. So, you start with uh, G such that all elements of G are nilpotent. Then using remark 1 all elements of G will be admin nilpotent. Okay. So, that would imply that uh, G is nilpotent. So, actually uh, I will stop here uh, because we need uh, some more preparatory work in order to prove English theorem. So, I so, that work I will do it in the next lecture. So, that uh, important result will be called invariance lemma. Uh, so, that I will do it next time. Okay. I will stop here. Thank you.